What we've got here is a line segment with a midpoint on it. I constructed this, so I know that's a midpoint. Let me show you the distance from A to M and the distance from M to B, and they are the same. That makes M the midpoint. Let's look at the actual coordinates. A is 1, 2, and B is 11, 6. And so this will be how a problem will set up. They'll just give you some points. You may not even get a picture, but you'll see some points, and they want to know what the coordinates of the midpoint are. I'd like you to see if you can figure it out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this guy and drag him underneath here. Now let's add up the X coordinates, 11 and 1, and we get a 12. Let's add up the Y coordinates, 6 and 2, we get an 8. So we have coordinates x12, y8. Is that the midpoint? Well, no, no, it's way over here. So you want the midpoint to be here. The midpoint's halfway. The midpoint is 6, 4. Compare that to the 12, 8. What did they do? We added the x's together and divided by 2. We added the y's together and divided by 2. So that should help you understand the actual midpoint formula which is this, x1 plus x2, that's the first x and that's the second x, doesn't really matter, you can switch them up because you're adding them, divided by 2, and then we're going to do the same thing with the y's, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And you understand that looks a little complicated with all these little subscripts, but that's why I wanted to work this out for you ahead of time so you could see what you were doing. Add the x's together, divide by 2. Add the y's together, divide by 2. This is awesome for people who like formulas, but if you're a little formula adverse, there's another way to do this, and since we're in geometry, I kind of like this other method too. So I'm going to show that to you right now. All right, here is the same problem, the same endpoints. So we're going to approach it a little bit differently. If I go across the bottom here, I want to count the number of boxes that I have right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, awesome. Halfway would be right here after five. So you have five on one side, five on the other, so that's halfway. So the midpoint must have that as the x coordinate, and that means it's right there, whatever that point is. So let's figure out the coordinates for this point right here. Well, the x coordinate is, now remember, these are just counting the boxes. You got to go back to the graph and look at what the actual coordinate is. The x coordinate is six, and the y coordinate is four. So there's the midpoint again, did it a different way. Part of the reason I'm showing you this is a little intro to something in a lesson that's coming up called partitioning segments. More on that another time. So I've gone over this two different ways. The one we just did was counting boxes. I don't know another, I don't know a, an official name for that. It's just something that I like. And then this way to introduce you to the formula, which is what you're normally going to see in a math class. I just want you to know you always have another way of being able to find it, and that would be the counting boxes. All right, let's look at some problems. Find the midpoint of the line segment with the given endpoints. And I think I'm going to probably use the formula because it's kind of easy. Add the x's together. x1 is 9, x2 is 7. You're going to add the y's together, and we'll divide those by 2 as well. y1 is 8, y2 is 10. So we pop everything into the formula. To simplify this, 9 plus 7 is 16 divided by 2, so that would be 8. 18 divided by 2 would be 9, and there's our midpoint. The formula rocks if you really get it. It's just that when you see it on paper, it looks very intimidating. The process is the same, but the numbers we're working with are going to be a little bit more challenging because we have negative numbers in here. You're still going to do the same thing. Add the x's together, negative 7 plus 5 over 2. Add the y's together, negative 4 plus negative 8 over 2. Negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. Negative 4 plus negative 8 is negative 12, and we're going to divide both of those by 2, so we end up with negative 1 and negative 6.
You're going to take the negative 3 and the negative 6, put those together and divide by 2. You're going to take the 3 and the negative 2, those are the y's, put those together and divide by 2. Those are fractions. You can put them in as decimals and you have to go with your teacher. But these fractions are in lowest terms and they're fine. This is the most difficult type of problem that comes in along with this midpoint. And the difference, it's like the midpoint questions are so easy, then all of a sudden this little sucker shows up and everybody just like can't figure out how to even start. Given the midpoint and one endpoint, find the other endpoint. I always draw a picture for these. I have the endpoint 3, negative 1. I'm not putting this on graph paper. I'm just drawing myself a little helping picture. I know that the middle is negative 2 and 3. And what I don't know is what the other endpoint that they used to come up with this answer. So I do know that these are my x coordinates. These two things added together and divided by 2 came up with an answer of negative 2. All right, so that's one little equation I need to solve. Start by multiplying that by 2 to cancel that fraction. Then you, if you multiply one side by 2, you got to multiply the other side by 2. We end up with 3 plus x equals negative 4. And then subtracting 3 from both sides, we get x equals negative 7. So this x will be negative 7. Now we got to do the same thing for the y's. This negative 1 plus this y divided by 2 equals 3. Set up the little equation, do the same thing, multiply both sides by 2 to cancel the fraction. We end up with negative 1 plus y equals 6 and y equals 7. So our other endpoint was negative 7 and positive 7. Hey future Tammy here and I was editing this video and I thought we need to do this problem again but put it on graph paper because not everybody's going to dig the algebra. So watch this. I'm going to graph the endpoint first. There's the 3, negative 1 endpoint. Then I'm going to graph the midpoint. And that is negative 2, 3. Then draw a ray. You want, you want it to start at the endpoint and go through the midpoint. Now we're going to do a little counting boxes action because I like counting boxes. So <laughs> I'm going to go from the red point, from the endpoint up to the midpoint. I have to go uh, five units this way. Don't get this mixed up with slope. I'm not doing slope because this would be a negative five on slope. I'm just counting boxes to see how to do that, how to find the other endpoint. So five boxes in this direction, one, two, three, four, five, and then four boxes up. And then do it again. Follow that pattern because we know about those two points. We're looking for some missing third point and we're going to find it by going five boxes this direction and four boxes up and boom, there's our other endpoint. And we didn't have to do any algebra. All we have to do now is try to come up with the coordinates for that. So let's see what that would be. The x coordinate would be right here. So that's going to be negative seven. And the y coordinate would be here. So the actual coordinates are negative 7 and positive 7, which is what we got when we did the algebra, right? Yeah, I know. I like this method better too. Again, do not get what I just did mixed up with slope, but if you understand it, there would be a difference here. Like if you wanted to use this for slope, one of those numbers would be negative, the 4 or the 5. In the comments, tell me if you know that answer. The next lesson, when it's ready, there'll be a link to it here. Until it's ready, you're going to see a link to the playlist. The previous lesson on segment bisectors, here is a link. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.